we're outside. What up? Why are we outside? Well, today we're going to be outside because um, what we're interested in is thinking about the white balance settings on your camera. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about uh, what white balance is. Um, and you've sort of seen that video sort of uh, thinking about uh, tungsten versus daylight color balanced film. Our cameras allow us to sort of set uh, the white balance from photograph to photograph to photograph. Tungsten? Like this is the tungsten balance. So daylight, tungsten, super blue, boom, right? Wrong setting. Fluorescent coming at ya. Ooh. So now we're at 4000K, which is fluorescent in daylight. Again, when you're in one type of light and you've got your white balance on your camera set to another type of light, this is what happened. So set up for cloud, we're sort of getting a little bit closer, uh, but it still looks like 6000K. So that birthday party weird photo that you're in the wrong light. Now we're at my favorite icon. It's literally my favorite icon in all of Canon, which is the Shady House. Uh, Shady House is 72K, so uh, maybe not direct sunlight, but a little bit of shade. It might look okay. We'll see. Here we are in auto white balance. Um, it might look different from this camera to that camera, this camera to that camera, this camera, that camera, this camera, that camera. It might look a little different. I don't know. So uh, here we are at 5200K, which is daylight balance. We went ahead and set it instead of the auto white balance. Um, so this should be 5200K. This should be 5200 Kelvin. We'll go from there. Um, that's how we're going to shoot the rest of this video. Um, what this video is going to really be about is how to use the gray card to speed up your workflow. So you might not use the gray card when you're out in the world sort of making pictures and you've uh, got a daylight sort of set up like this. But I tend to use a gray card uh, certainly indoors and I also love a gray card for uh, commercial jobs, right? So um, if I'm going to sort of shoot something and I know everything's got to be have color consistency from image to image to image, um, I might go ahead and I might shoot a gray card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. Okay, I'm out here uh, ready to make some pictures. We got lawn mowers, we got bugs, we got all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start uh, making a picture by starting with my gray card. Now, you can, if you want, uh, use your model, use uh, whatever, you know, put it in the scene. I've got this extra monopod, so I'm just going to use the monopod to uh, set up my gray card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an exposure reading um, and I'm going to sort of set my focus and make the picture. So I'm here, I'm on the gray card. Um, I've got the exposure set how I want. And I'm going to make my initial picture. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my gray card from the scene. I'll also, you know, get rid of my assistant or my tripod. And now, with that first picture made, for this like honeysuckle area, the uh, foliage that I'm going to photograph, I can keep that same exposure um, and I can go ahead and just start making pictures. So when I'm satisfied with the photographs that I've made, um, I can move on to the next scene. We're going to go to the computer and check out what we did. Here we are in beautiful Lightroom, and um, I'm in my library module, and I've went ahead and I have imported these images. Anyway. So I'm going to move from the library module to the develop module. And you can see here, I've got this portrait of me and then the one that I want to use. Clearly, well, I mean, I don't want to use any of the uh, portraits of me for anything really, but um, I don't 
certainly want to have the one with the gray card in it. Um, so I'm going to go back and forth, and this is the image I want to use. But this has my target in it. And so in order to sort of set the white balance on all this, all I have to do is grab this little eyedropper tool over in the basic tab. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to pick a neutral target. So boom. And you can see it's going to white balance it. But this is the image that I want to have that white balance work on. So do you see down here it says reset in previous? If I select back to image 27 and I press and hold the shift key, I can select both of these images. And you'll notice 27 is like brighter highlighted, so that's the source. And then uh, 28 is going to be the target. All I have to do is hit sync. And then it's going to ask me treatment and profile, white balance, and you can select or deselect all of these, but I definitely want this white balance checked. And now I can say synchronize. And if you look, I've now got that perfectly synchronized. Now, not the most perfect image. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and make all of my adjustments. I can maybe cool that down a little bit because the color picker is not going to get it perfect. It's going to get us within a range. I can maybe bring my blacks down. Maybe I will bump up my highlights. And now if I press and hold shift to 28 again, I can synchronize that. And now both images are going to carry over all of the white balance and editing information that I did. And so here's our demo image. Um, I've got two white balance cards and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my white balance. And then what I'm going to do is um, I can select this entire range of all the foliage. So from 30 to 41, I can basically select the next 10 pictures, hit synchronize, um, again, really, I'm only concerned about the white balance on this, but I can go ahead and hit synchronize. And now the white balance of all of these foliages, foliage, foliage, foliage images are going to come through. Now I can come to this first one and do the same thing that I just did with that portrait. I can maybe change the exposure, bring the contrast up, uh, maybe bring out some shadow detail, drop the blacks, maybe give it a little pump in saturation. And now, if I press and hold shift from 31 to 41, I can synchronize that. And now my temperature and my tint, my exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow, whites, blacks, everything that I changed, even my saturation, as long as I have it checked in this synchronized settings, beautiful. I can hit synchronize and it will work all the way through. Great, so that allows me to go through and select all of those images. And I really do like this because it speeds up the process, especially when I have a set of images that have the same exposure and sort of have the same sort of rendering intent. Um, I tend to use this a lot of times on a commercial job. So you can see here, I'm gonna go in, I'm going to hit my gray target, the best version of that. Um, I can then go back out and I can now transfer the white balance to the images with uh, the model in them. So I can take this first one with my assistant and my gray card, press and hold shift, synchronize that white balance, say synchronize, and then it's going to carry that white balance into the other images. Now at this point I might then go ahead and kind of work this image a little bit more. Maybe I'll pump that down. Think about what I need to do to get these colors to really pop. Think about uh, what I'm working on and then I can synchronize the rest of the job and then send them over to the client so I can sort of pre-edit everything before I do like a final edit. Uh, let's do that again from another setup. So we will zoom in, pick a neutral target, zoom back out, and then synchronize the white balance on our entire shoot. And so again, this just sort of helps us get in the range, um, especially if I have an image that is like totally off like this. I obviously had the wrong color balance. So I'm going to go into here, 
um, you can see that 19, 20, 21, 22, all of those images have the uh, wrong white balance. I will synchronize. And now all of these images are properly white balanced and they can allow me to start editing. Now you're saying to yourself, Justin, oof, what if I don't have a gray card? What if I forgot? I can go on to something that has like a neutral target here, so maybe like I'll use this white, and I can actually use that to sort of white balance, and then I can maybe make my adjustments from there. Shift, sync, synchronize. On this one, let's just even go ahead and synchronize the crop, because this was for passport photo, so I can come into here you know, make sure that I have all the right specifications, crop it. Now, as long as I synchronize and I have the crop tool selected, boom, both images are done. And even something like this, where I have an image, maybe I'll use I don't have my gray car, but I do have a gray Jeep in the background, and I can go ahead and synchronize all of those. And That's it. That's how easy it is to use a gray card. It's a really, really great and useful tool for getting your color balance sort of in a, a closer and more acceptable range. I love shooting a gray card. It makes my workflow easier. Again, I'm usually doing it on a commercial job, but when you're out sort of working on uh, a set of pictures, why not use it? The hardest part about using a gray card is remembering to use a gray card. So now that you've sort of seen how it works, hopefully uh, it'll help you get your color balance uh, done quicker and more efficiently so that you can get off of the computer and back out into the world making photographs.